Hi Catsters, it's Dr. Karen here. Today I am going to be showing you how to bathe a cat. Now this can get a little bit messy and it does involve some careful restraint of your cat. So if you haven't done so already, please go and have a look at my video on how to safely restrain your cat to make sure that you and your cat are as safe as possible. So the first thing we should be asking ourselves is, does my cat need a bath? Um, cats are obviously fastidious groomers. They take care of this generally themselves. At most, they might need a bit of a brush, um, might need a moist pet wipe or even a dry or no rinse shampoo. But most of the time they don't need a full on bath. Um, but in those instances that you do need a bath, here are some ideas of how. The most important thing is being prepared, having all the equipment you're going to need, because once you get started, you don't want to stop. Um, I've got a rubber mat, non-slip mat to go in my bathtub, but if you don't have one of those, a towel will do just as well. And that's a really important factor because one of the biggest things that is going to panic your cat, apart from the obvious water part of the bath, is a slippery surface. So if you've got a non-slip mat or place a towel on the bottom of the, uh, the bathtub or deep sink, whichever you're using, that will make it a lot less stressful. Uh, I'm using sort of a handheld shower tool. If you don't have one of these, a jug is just as good but the important thing is getting that temperature right. Uh, a cat's body temperature is a bit hot, you know, a bit warmer than ours, so you do want the water to feel warm, but you wanna make sure you run that for a good long time to make sure it doesn't suddenly get hot. Now I've got my victim clutch. I have found that the best way to get your cat, you know, more quickly settled with a bath is to get them wet as quickly as possible, get them saturated. Um, if you're doing it little by little, they feel that I've still got a chance to get away before it gets completely soaked. Whereas once they're completely wet, it's almost like a little bit of that fight goes out of them and they kind of surrender to the experience. Um, using a pet safe shampoo, of course, I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit here. Um, giving him a really good lather overall, staying clear of getting any in that, the ears, the eyes, anywhere like that. I'm really focusing on Clutch's feet because yes, although cats clean themselves very well, he's a little bit of a grub. He's not good at taking care of his feet and his toes. So making sure I give them a really good clean. And you can see once you really get going with the lathering, you can see why that tail raising up, that it actually becomes a not so uh, horrible experience for them. Uh, and now we're sort of going into the rinsing off stage. Again, keep checking that water temperature. You don't want to suddenly startle them with a cold tap. You don't want them being scalded with hot water. I'm just using a little bit of moisture here just to give him a bit of a clean around his eyes and his nose before getting ahead and, uh, and giving him a good thorough rinse off. When you're getting anywhere near the ears, just make sure you're sort of putting a, a hand over, over the ears, just to make sure you don't end up putting any water down the ear canals. And I'll just sped it up again for us, just to uh, show you, just making sure we get every bit of soap off the body. If you use a good conditioning shampoo, you don't need a separate conditioner. And all of a sudden they seem a lot skinnier <laughs> once they've had the bath. Now, if they're tolerating it, um, one of the next things you can do is sort of try to squeeze out a bit of the excess moisture um, until you reach that point where they say, yep, that's enough, I want out of here, which Clutch has just done. This is when it, uh, you need to have your towels at the ready. Really, really vigorous drying off here. Um, you want to make sure you get as much water off them as, as you possibly can. And the other thing I do is make sure I've got a room kind of pre, you know, ready and pre-warmed for him to go and chill out and uh, recover in. You might be thinking, well, that looked pretty easy. I can bath a cat. Others might be thinking, <laughs> that's clutch. 
he lets you vacuum him so it's going to be a whole different situation with another cat and you're probably right um i am going to bathe zelda i've never done this before i'm only doing it because she's got cat litter stuck around her trousers and if you've seen previous videos you know how much she hates being brushed and although we've made some progress there she needs a good rinsing off um in the past i said we have sedated her to give her a full clipping but i'm hoping to avoid that and i'm going to show you the uh, scary truth of bathing a cat who really doesn't like it who i haven't done before so let's see how we go so the bath with Zelda is definitely a bit of a different experience than with Clutch. In hindsight, I should have used a jug rather than the shower hose. That was a mistake and one that I have learned from. You know, she, she does have a panic and I do need to use sort of my firm, firm restraint technique at the beginning. And yeah, it's, it can be a little bit sort of upsetting when you see them freaking out at, at, at the start. Um, in my experience, what I find is that, you know, if you get control of the situation, if you do use firm handling, and if you look closely, I'm not gripping any fur, skin, there's no scruff hold going on, and she's not actually clawing or scratching at me. I'm just using sort of firm, flat hand pressure over her shoulders, over her neck and over her elbows, just to keep her from being able to really scramble free. Um, once she realizes that, right, this is happening and she is totally wet, you'll notice the body relaxes a lot. She's still not keen, you know, but having that firm pressure does actually reassure them. If you're scruff holding, if you are pushing her to the, you know, to the bottom of the bathtub, or equally if you let her just get free, scramble free, scurry into a corner, then all is all is lost. I don't want her to fear this situation. I don't want her to be terrified, but I want her to feel that okay. It is happening I will surrender to it somewhat and that firm pressure is what will get you there getting her feeling settled getting her completely saturated from the get-go is what will make the difference um, but I think it's sensible to be prepared for the fact that this is something your cat's not going to want to do unless you've got one of those cats that does actually enjoy getting into the water then this is going to be something they will fight you uh, to, to try to avoid. So you need to be prepared for that. But if you are firm and confident with your handling, you will see, and, and, and as you'll see from in that video, the, the panic moment is brief. 